is language we use shaped by our unconscious mind. This next title illustrates the many ways that emotion can help decipher our understanding of mental illness and find empathy for those who seem completely disconnected from reality. Welcome to Audiobook Reviews in 5. This is Yana, also known as Jana. In today's episode, I'm reviewing Projections, a story of human emotions by Carl Dyseroth, read by Carl Dyseroth, Natalie Nottis, and Karen Chilton. Carl Dyseroth has spent his life researching the human mind, both as a renowned clinical psychiatrist and as a researcher creating and developing the revolutionary field of optogenetics, which uses light to help discover the brain's workings. Projections is promoted as a work that combines his knowledge of the brain's inner circuitry with a deep empathy for his patients in order to examine what mental illness reveals about the human mind and the origin of human feelings. First, the bad news. Dyseroth is an unfortunate example of an author who should not narrate his own work, or at least an author who needs to train and practice narration more. I would not recommend this title as an audiobook because Dyseroth uses a strangely halting, nearly muttering tone that makes for an exhausting listening experience. The sections narrated by Natalie Nadas and Karen Chilton flowed perfectly, and it's such a shame that Dyseroth insists on reading so much of this. Goodreads reviews of this book also reveal a strong aversion to Dyseroth's style, with several reviewers deriding this as pretentious or not covering enough of the technical science. To be fair, I found his explanation of his research on optogenetics and projections almost impossible to understand. It was only after I listened to his conversations on the Huberman Lab podcast and the Mind and Matter podcast that I gained a foothold on his research concepts. So I've linked to both of those episodes in my show notes if you're interested in learning more. So with all of these critiques, maybe you're wondering why I'm recommending this title at all. The truth is, for all its faults, I felt strangely compelled to continue listening to this audiobook. I couldn't put it down. I can't remember ever reading or listening to anything remotely like this. I felt a personal connection to Dyseroth, since we shared a childhood ambition to be poets and an intense love of writing. According to an interview with a Guardian, he once crashed his bicycle as he was attempting to read a volume of Gerard Manley Hopkins while peddling. I can't recall the work of another scientist or researcher so informed by empathy for his patients. Dyseroth seems primarily interested in understanding feelings and why we have them and how they evolve and why they're so often maladapted to our circumstances. This shines through in how Dyseroth depicts patients with mental illness. The stories of patients suffering with the mania of bipolar disorders, the delusions and hallucinations of paranoid schizophrenia, and the instability of borderline personality disorder don't rely on clinical language here. Instead, Dyseroth shows us how the language patterns and emotional descriptions of each patient reflect or project their clinical diagnosis as well, or perhaps even more reliably, than any sort of clinical lab test. He also uses examples from fiction, myth, and history. For example, the mania and bipolar disorder seems evident in the case of Joan of Arc. There's something surprisingly reassuring to me that a research scientist who uses tiny fiber optic cables to fire lasers into the brains of mice is also capable of using the English language so empathically and expertly to follow the course of a particular emotion. Also, Dyseroth draws compelling connections to our modern understanding of mental illness and the need to cross-pollinate fields of research to make breakthrough transformative changes in treatment. Perhaps more so than any other researcher, Dyseroth's empathy for his patients helps him look for the evolutionary reasons behind mental illness. He explains the link to adaptation and that some mental illness symptoms may have helped communities to survive. For example, 
Diceros contrasting illustrations of social and non-social brain states in two patients, one with extreme extroversion and another with autism, show the limitations and advantages these two ends of the spectrum reveal about how we adapt to our environment. Repeatedly, I was impressed by how Dyseroth found language and vivid descriptions to make his patients relatable and even universally relevant to the human experience. Although Dyseroth raised more questions for me than he answered in projections, that's a good thing. I wish more scientific inquiry would be so bold as to cross disciplines and borrow ideas so freely. And while I don't recommend the audiobook format, I encourage you to listen to Dyseroth's interviews and consider reading projections to experience some of what I've described here. That's all for this episode of Audiobook Reviews in 5. Thanks for listening. If you have not yet done so, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to Audiobook Reviews in 5 on Anchor, Apple, Spotify, and many others. By subscribing, you help increase the profile of this podcast and chances of other listeners finding it. I look forward to checking in with you all again soon. Please stay safe and be well.